The big question of the day is, is the Biden administration planning revenge on Israel after Trump's election victory? Sounds crazy, but it literally could happen. The number one reason they are infuriated is that they've lost their opportunity to fully unleash their plan to create a Palestinian state in the heart of Israel. All their Middle East plans and policies are on the brink of being reversed. The problem is they still have 74 days in power. Will they go ballistic and start pushing ahead with their goal of establishing the two-state terror state in the heart of Israel? Will they continue to allow or even start pushing billions of dollars into the hands of Israel's greatest enemies? Or will they turn on Israel in support of the ICC, the ICJ? Or lastly, and most likely, Will they halt essential military shipments to Israel at a time when Israel needs it the very most? We're talking all about this today on today's show. Stay tuned. I am Joshua, and this is The Israel Guys. Hey, guys, welcome back to The Israel Guys, where we believe in a world of Jew hatred and anti-Israel propaganda. You should have a direct connection to the land and people of Israel. Okay, before you think I'm completely crazy in thinking that the Biden administration could give Israel a big slap before leaving office. Remember this. Remember that we had a similar administration not so long ago, the, the Obama administration, that did exactly that in the last days uh, of the administration. Remember, December 23rd, 2016, as Obama was leaving office, what did he do? Well, he did it at the UN Security Council. He uh, allowed a vote to go through, did not stop it, welcomed it uh, to come through. It was a, resolu a resolution from the Security Council, which is much bigger uh, and, and, and harmful to Israel than any other kind of UN uh, votes. The Security Council is a big deal. Now, he allowed that to come against, he said that these, these settlements of Judea and Samaria, Jews living in Judea and Samaria, was illegal. We don't support that. And uh, this this was a resolution that came out in the Security Council. Now, that caused Israel, it was a bombshell on how that could happen and how Obama, kind of like his last, his parting little uh, slap to Israel as he left office, uh, was to let that go um, in utter, um, just, you know, hatred of Israel uh, to let that happen. Uh, this opened the door for major, major problems uh, for Israel in the international arena. Um, still to this day, uh, we're having issues uh, due to these kind of things that that happened, specifically the security, the UN security resolution. So will Biden copy the same kind of move? Well, it seems very rational, uh, very likely that this indeed will happen, that Biden will copy the moves of Obama as concern to Israel. Uh, what kind of slap could he give? Let's talk about it. Uh, there's a lot of slaps that the U.S. could give in the current state of mind uh, that the administration is in. Uh, first and foremost, we have a similar case, that of the U.N. Uh, Security Council case, and that's at the International Criminal Court. The International Criminal Court uh, has is threatening to issue arrest warrants for uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, as well as the former Defense Minister, Yoav Gallant. Now, would that be a great slam? And just a slap in the face before Biden leaves, just to delegitimize and demonize Israel just a little bit before he leaves. It might make him feel good about it. Uh, he might. He might do that. You know, he uh, really hates um, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, and maybe that would be one of the, you know, greatest slaps he could help just get behind one of those kind of uh, little th things before he leaves. Now, this would be devastating for Israel. Uh, I don't think, it, obviously, not the end of, of the world, uh, but it, it hurts Israel to have that kind of um, high-level slap in the face uh, from the international community when it's absolutely insane. Israel is the defender of of all that's right and true and godly in the world today. And to slap the one in the face who's the one who's fighting the evil, demonic, 
forces of of terrorism in the world, the one who's face to face with it, that's fighting for us is a real slam. That literally could happen. We also have a major case down at the International Criminal Court of Justice. Okay, that's a different entity. Um, and the court, the case there is, is again, a little bit more like the UN Security Council, where they're actually, again, delegitimizing and actually saying that Israel has no right. It's illegal for Jews to be living here in Judea and Samaria. It's illegal for Jews. Let me just say that again. It's illegal for Jews to live in Judea. That's why they had to rename it West Bank. The historical name is Judea. You guys already know all this stuff. Uh, but this is what the uh, International Criminal Court of Justice is pushing right now is to, uh, and they've already pushed that through. Now, America could get behind it and actually put some wheels on it uh, for that to take traction, saying that the ancient homeland, what they call the West Bank, um, is illegal, that Jewish communities, and actually this is what they're suggesting, and I think uh, a Biden administration would really get behind this. They would love this idea. The International Criminal Court of Justice is suggesting, because it's illegal, according to international law, that they say, uh, that these Jewish communities back in the ancient homeland are illegal, they should be dismantled. Yes, they should be dismantled. And more than that, Israel should pay for all the damages that they've caused. Right. That's what they're saying. And this could be a great slap uh, from the Biden administration as a parting gift uh, or a parting slap uh, to Israel. Uh, that could happen. They could get behind the, the International Criminal Court. They could get behind the International Criminal Court of Justice. Either one of these. Now, there's one more option that could also be a slap. Uh, we're gonna, actually, we're going to talk about a couple more options. Uh, there's another institutional option here when we're talking about big, big, uh, big companies uh, that are messing up the world these days. Uh, UNRWA, they could try to save UNRWA's tail. UNRWA is the uh, UN organization dedicated specifically to the Palestinian issue. Now, there's nothing like this exists in the whole world. It's so political and so incorrect. Uh, it's it's so biased. Uh, literally, Israel has a hundred names of employees that work for UNRWA that are, were caught in of, of, of straight on, no questions about it, uh, operating on October 7th in the massacre of, of Jew, Jewish families on uh, the Gaza border. So uh, UNRWA is a filthy organization tied to terror in every kind of way. Israel has banned UNRWA from operating in Israel, but that's a big blow because the UN now doesn't have that arm to support the terrorists over here. And I'll just say that bluntly because that's basically what's going on. Uh, they don't have the billions of dollars that they can funnel in anymore if Israel cuts their tie. You cannot work here. You're aiding the enemies. You're aiding terrorism. You're teaching children to become terrorists. All this is documented. Now, for Israel to say no to that uh, makes a lot of sense. Why can't you're not going to have international agencies operating in your country that are promoting uh, violence against your people? It just makes sense. So Israel said no more. Clear vote in the in the Israeli government uh, banning the UNRWA uh, entity and the UN. Now, uh, this could be another great way that America could say, don't kick UNRWA out. Reverse that. And, uh, you know, and we'll give you something in exchange. There could be some sort of deal like this. Um, that could be another one. Hey guys, we'll be right back. But first, do you know one of the best ways to support Israel right now during this war is to buy products from the Israeli businesses. Our friends at Blessed Buy Israel ship the beautiful products of small businesses and families from Israel's heartland to people all around the world. You can buy the wonderful tastes and smells and goodness of the promised land and Blessed by Israel ships them straight to your doorstep. Check out the amazing extra virgin olive oil or savory spices, cosmetics, hand creams, soaps, lotions, chocolates, coffees, and much, much more. The best part about all this is, is that the same time as you are enjoying the goodness of the land of Israel, you are also blessing the faithful pioneers who are restoring and rebuilding Judea and Samaria. That's right, your purchases are an effective way to contribute to the strengthening of Israel. So head over to Blessed, that's Blessed, B-U-Y, Israel.com to buy the wonderful products of Israel's heartland and support the pioneers of Judea and Samaria. Again, that's Blessed, by B-U-Y, Israel.com. The link is in the description below. Now, here's another situation for you. 
one of the biggest things that the Biden administration wants is they have big ties, something massive along this little seven mile strip between Egypt and Gaza. They want to open that funnel back up so they can start arming Hamas again. Uh, well, of course, America's not literally arming Hamas there, but they want that border to be open so that the obvious thing could happen so that ISIS that's on the other side of the border could start engaging again. It makes no sense. And of course, maybe, you know, that's just exactly what would happen. It would make you think that they would know that that's what would happen. But they want Israel to give up that Philadelphia corridor. Are they going to pressure Israel uh, at this last little bit here for some military gear that they're they're also holding back? Uh, are they going to pressure Israel into giving in to some sort of um, uh, pulling out of the Philadelphia corridor for something else? What are they going to do? They might pressure. They might pressure Israel to for a hostage deal. Let's get the hostages out, but you got to pull out of the Philadelphia. Who knows? Uh, but that's also another big thing on the table. Uh, here's one last thing that I want to want you to think about um, as they're. Uh, the Biden administration is walking out. Um, <clears throat> what could they do? There's one other big, big, big thing that I want you to be aware of. Since the Biden administration has been in power, and I'm going to quote the stats here uh, from Senator Ted Cruz from Texas, and I'll quote him here. He says, the administration has allowed over $100 billion to flow to the Ayatollah, We're talking about uh, Iranian Ayatollah, which he pours into nuclear development, terrorism, propaganda of all of uh, all of which is also supposed to be subject to sanctions, which the administration is also waiving or refusing to enforce. He continued the Biden Harris administration's appeasement of the Iranian regime knows no bounds even while the regime and its proxies are launching daily attacks against American troops and our allies. Okay, so that was from Senator uh, Ted Cruz from Texas. Now, this just brings up the idea that if they've already funneled $100 billion, and really the reason for the reason, the big reason for why we are where we are right now is that very reason. These $100 billion that have, uh, you know, these assets that were, that were thawed, you know, Iran has this backing to be able to funnel all this money into not only building a nuclear, uh, attempting to build a nuclear weapon, but also to to enhance their terror networks, these 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 proxy groups that are fighting Israel. If you have seen the weapons in Hezbollah and in Hamas, well, where did they come from? They come from Iran, and it's tied directly to this support. Uh, this should be uh, obvious. It's a it's a very simple statement, but also a very hard statement to see this happen. Now, will this last little leg of the journey, the last 74 days, will it be that they try to push money into the enemy hands? That could be another thing that they do. We have no idea, uh, but currently uh, this is the what's going on. Uh, Secretary uh, uh, of State Anthony Blinken uh, signed off on all this before the all these billions of dollars going to Iran. Uh, under this, he said that, uh, and I'll quote: uh, "It was vital to the national security of the United States." Now, I think just about everybody watching this is probably disagree with. Anthony Blinken about this, but that's literally what he said. Um, so these guys are a few options for what may go down in the next 74 days as we count down to the change of hands, the move from the uh, Biden administration to the Trump administration, which here in Israel, I will just tell you, there's a lot of excitement on the streets for the days that are coming ahead the 74 days from now when the Trump administration takes office. A lot of excitement here in Israel. Um, we look forward to those days and we hope that these uh, coming days will uh, be okay, that there will be uh, limited damage, and even that maybe all of these things would not happen altogether. Let's pray that none of them happen, uh, but these are some substantial things that you should be having on your radar as we look to the days ahead with the ending of the current Biden administration. Guys, that's all for now. Uh, stay tuned as always. Stop listening to the lies and the propaganda and connect to the truth for what is happening here in Israel. We'll be back here at the Israel Guys.